Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we'll take an introductory look at modifier-based modeling. I am not going to focus on abstract designs, but on real-world objects. The object we'll create in this video is a defense from yesterday's environment practice. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. The whole premise of modifier-based modeling is that we'll start off with the least amount of actual geometry and then work our way up to our final mesh in the modifier stack. This way we have all the controls we need for further modification of the model. Now it is always good to have some reference and that's why I pulled this image onto my second monitor. You can see that we have to create this kind of weaving pattern. In this video we'll now try to actually offset the fans into the Y direction so that they don't intersect but rather focus on creating a believable result from the distance. Now, it is always good to do everything in scale, especially with real-world environments. So I suggest you to activate the Rigify add-on, which comes shipped with Blender, because this allows us to create a human rig under the armature tab. And you can now see that this is about two meters high, so it is to scale. Now let's move this away and create our first actual piece of geometry. We'll start with a plane, rotated 90 degrees on the x-axis and 45 degrees on the y-axis. Now let's select these two edges, press X and delete them. We are now left with this piece of geometry, which we can now scale down to about this size. Also don't forget to apply rotation and scale. This will help us with the array modifiers. This triangle now represents this triangular shape in here. All that's left to do now is to array and thicken it so it starts looking like a fence. Let's start with our first array modifier and we'll use a factor of 1 on the z-axis. You can now choose a count that controls the height of the fence, but because I don't want the following operations to take that long to compute, I will stick to a count of 4 right now. Now we have to somehow smooth the ending points right here. And the best way to do this is with a bevel modifier. We will choose vertices and a limit method of angle. But you can see this doesn't work as expected. This is because we'll have to choose merge in the array modifier. This way the vertices in this point will get merged. If we now enable the bevel modifier you can see that we get a slightly different result. Of course we'll have to turn down the amount to maybe 0.01 meter and up the amount of segments. Of course our mesh right now just contains edges and no actual geometry, so we have to somehow thicken our object. To do this we can add a skin modifier. You can see that this is way too big, so let's go into edit mode, select everything with A and with Ctrl A scale the skin modifier down to a point where you think it fits. We can also enable smooth shading, which will make our fence look round. In the end we could now add a subdivision surface modifier to actually smooth out our geometry. Okay, great. All that's left to do now is to mirror this mesh on the other side so we can actually weave it together. We can either do this with a mirror modifier or another array one and I will choose an array modifier. Now we don't have to use relative offset but object offset instead. And we can add in an empty. Of course this is pretty big so let's scale it down and apply the scale. Okay, let's select it right here and rotate it by 180 degrees on the z-axis and move it to the left. So we weave these two together. Now we can adjust the count on the first array modifier so it fits the height of this fence. And right now this is a bit too big for me so I'll select both the empty and our fence and scale it down. And now adjust the count to my liking. To also array this fence part on the x-axis we can just use another array modifier and offset it slightly less than 1, so it still intersects, and now adjust this count. And now we have a fully modifier based fence. Of course there are still some things missing, like poles on the left and right, and if you want you could also add a barbed wire. And this is what I'll do to end off this tutorial, because it is actually pretty fun to play around with curves and modifiers. So to start off, let's enable the extra objects add-on for curves. And now we'll be able to choose logarithmic under the curve spirals. This of course looks nothing like barbed wire, because we'll have to adjust the height value right here. Because I firstly want to get this one in place and then array it on top of the fence, 
I want to turn up the steps by one, so we can more easily merge the arrays together. Great, we can now leave edit mode and scale this down, as well as position it correctly. We can now add an array modifier and apply rotation and now choose a factor of 1 on the x-axis and don't forget to click merge. Now there's just one problem which will become apparent in a bit because I now want to add some geometry which we can wrap around our curve. So let's add an S-cylinder, scale it down on the x and y-axis and rotate it by 90 degrees so it's laying on the floor and I'll also scale it down on the x-axis just like this. I will delete both the top and bottom faces because this will make it much easier to wrap it around a curve. And of course don't forget to add some geometry, maybe around 200 loop cuts, so we can actually bend it. I will also just select shade smooth. So let's go into the modifier panel and choose curve and let's choose the curve object. And you can now see that this looks really wrong and this is because we haven't applied all transforms on our curve. So let's do this. And now you can see our object correctly wraps around the curve. We can now move it on the x-axis to move it on the curve. But now the problem I was talking about before shows. Because the mesh actually doesn't wrap around our arrayed part of the curve. This is because curve modifiers don't actually work the way we want it. We will have to convert this curve into a mesh and convert it back into a curve. So we can actually wrap around this object. So let's do this, let's choose a fixed count for our array modifier and let's also smoothen it out a bit with a subdivision surface modifier. And now press Ctrl A and click on Visual Geometry to Mesh. This will now convert our curve into a mesh with the vertices, which we can now choose to convert back to a curve. And you can see that now everything works correctly. We can now array our cylinder over this curve just like this. And to make it look more like a barbed wire, let's add an A decimate modifier, choose a ratio of maybe 0.1 or 0.01, and let's quickly enter edit mode and make it even more thinner, like this. And now you can see that we have created a good looking fence with just a few modifiers and very simple geometry. And yeah, that's basically it. This was my introduction to modifier-based modeling. And I hope you learned something. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see us in the next video next Saturday.